Kia has just unveiled the Kia EV3 and I love what Kia is doing with their designs these days. They look completely different from the competition. There is no aggression in their designs and it's not really automotive design. It's more like uh, consumer electronics when it comes to the graphics and the proportions of this car. So we're going to have a look at the front side and rear, the sketches as well as the spec and tech. Before we jump into Photoshop, let's have a look at what this car is all about from this auto from again from car and driver link down below in the description. So the Kia EV3 is adorable and confirmed to be coming to the US. It will join the Nero, the EV6 and the three row EV9 as a 2026 model year. And what this proves is that you don't need to have a bean or a soap bar on wheels to get great range because this has from an 81.4 kilowatt hour battery up to 350 miles of range which is great for this type of styling it's very boxy similar to what we have in the ev9 as well so along with the standard trim there will be a gt line model with different wheels glossy trims and a unique bumper design as well the ev the ev3 electric suv maintains the cute cubic profile of the concept with a squared off hood and a hatchback rear glass i do think this looks great However, I'm not, I, I don't like this trend that we have that every single small little car needs to have a lot of plastic, uh, black plastic in the lower section and around the wheelhouses to make it look like it sits higher than it actually is. This would be cool to see if we uh, painted these pieces that we have around the wheels, for example, in this lower section, just have this beam body color to see what that will look like. So it comes in nine different colors and you have uh, four earthly huge hues of which are new to Kia. You have Aventurine Green, Shale Gray, Frost Blue and Terracotta. I do believe this might be Aventurine Green here or Shale Gray. Or shale gray. I'm not so sure but this is a great looking color specifically with the black graphics that we have up top and these very robotic graphics that we have. We're going to talk more about that of course uh, in a minute in Photoshop. Kia hasn't announced the full range of trim availability, only that there will be a standard series and then you have a slightly sporty looking, of course, GT, of course, GT line. Seating for five, the EV prioritizes interior space and accessibility. There are two 12.3 inch touchscreens across the dash connected to a five inch panel housing a readout of the climate control. So it looks like we're gonna get a separate five inch screen for the climate control settings. If we're gonna have everything be digital, at least have a separate screen for the climate control settings. And I do like that we have that here, uh, similar to what we have in the Audis, for example. Most functions will be controlled not only by touchscreen, but also on buttons, on actual buttons on the steering wheel. So we do have a few physical buttons in the interior as well as all the digital stuff going on. So the console lid, you can slide it back and forth and work as a table for snacks while you're working, while charging, or a better solution is a better use of this table would be use it as a sketch pad. So what you, while you're charging your, your, your EV3 here, it takes up to, uh, I think, 30 minutes uh, to go from 10 to 80%. You can just bring some markers and a big pen, start sketching your design ideas. What would you want to redesign on the EV3? You can sketch that down while you're charging. It's fantastic. It does say that the long-range EV3 will make use of an 81.4 kilowatt hour um, capacity battery. As I said, around 350 miles of range. Great range for this type of size of vehicle. Key also referenced that there might be an all-wheel drive uh, version with dual motors for uh, of the GT line and Kia says that the single motor uh, will send the EV3 from 0 to 62 miles per hour in 7.7.5 seconds. To me that sounds decent. We don't need every single EV to do 0 to 60 in 2 seconds. I mean it's crazy if this would have 800 horsepower and that type of performance. It just doesn't make sense for uh, the people who will buy this car and also it's going to lower the price point so Kia says that gold post is somewhere between 30 to 50 thousand dollars for this car which I think feels pretty reasonable uh, I like Kia the, I mean the build quality of Kia has just gone up a thousand percent the last 10 15 years or so and I do believe this will be a great build quality as well so with that said let's jump into Photoshop here have a look at uh, these sketches first of all from the Kia design team very funky sketches and as I said feels a lot more robotic than uh, the competition which still tend to go with a more aggressive look we have these taillights now typical Kia taillights will make this green so you can actually let's make it blue because the car itself is green so you can see that we do, do still have these um, 
new Kia design features where you have thin LED bars with some key thicker pieces of geometric shapes in the end point. And that seems to be a meeting that Kia design team had. Like, how can we separate our LEDs from the rest of the competition? Let's make a thin LED like this on every single LED that we have in the front and back. And in each corner, we either put a little triangle there or we put a little square or a rectangle or something like that. And that seems to be uh, the approach moving forward. Looking nice, clean sketches. I do believe these are probably sketches that were made after the fact that they were already nailed down the design just for promotional purposes because we don't see any sort of ideation stuff going on here. This seems to be the, like the final stuff. But we do have a lot of chamfers, which I love about Kia these days as well. A lot of chamfers and clean 45 degree, 90 degree angles all over the car. The interior, this is a cool sketch because here you can see uh, the, the ideas of the designers here. So you have a hidden speaker, a detail inside, transparent airbag, simple DSM, wireless charger, HDMI port somewhere in, in this area, I do believe. Hidden storage, V2L charger plus USB and a B, pillar, a B pillarless door. And you can see that this area here looks like the interior of a hospital or something like that. We have all these uh, compartments where you can just pull out and put stuff in. So it's very user friendly and here is the table in the middle. I do believe this is a table right here where you can slide this in and out if you want to. A couple of cup holders back here. Uh, very soft looking seating here as well. So with that said, let's have a look at the proper car here in white for these uh, press photos. And this definitely has a Stormtrooper look to it because everything is white or black. That's it. You don't get any other colors on this car. Even though I think a splash of red somewhere would probably be pretty cool to have as an accent color of this car. But you can see that we still have the same design philosophy when it comes to the key uh, graphic details here. Thin LED going into what? What did we talk about in the meeting? We said we wanted to have some geometric shapes in the end point of the LEDs and that's exactly what we have here. Thin up top here as well. Boom goes in to a small little rectangle at the very end point same like we have down here with the key headlights sitting right there with a bunch of small little diodes here. Um, Pretty large headlight, and I can't say that these are bumper headlights. Uh, they sort of reach in a little bit. If you call this a bumper, it goes right to the end, to the starting point of the bumper right here. So I can't call this bumper headlights. You have these, this new styling for the GT line at the very bottom. Super sharp. Again, 90 degree angle right here. You have a clear line, vertical line, horizontal line with a cool bunch of chamfers going on here. Very geometric feel and robotic feel for the new Kia EVs. And they also did that sort of uh, update for the EV6. It looks very clean. I do think, I'm not sure if we do we have a tiger nose here somewhere. I always try to look for the tiger nose. It feels like Kia is moving away from that, but we do have two dimples right here, one dimple in this area and another dimple right here, creating a nice chamfer, welcoming housing for the key graphics, which is the headlight and this unit in the middle. But we don't have any sort of dimples in the lower sections. I'm not sure if this is actually a tiger nose design. I think they moved away from that uh, these days, Kia, which is fine because it do it's done its job and created a very strong identity for Kia. Now looking at the side view here, this is what I'm talking about. Why do we need to have black plastic every single hatchback that needs to be sold in the US? I don't understand it. We can just make this body color and have it be a lot more sporty because as you can see, the, the ground clearance here is not SUV or crossover ground clearance. This is more of a normal sporty hatchback ground clearance. So why just visually try to force that it sits higher than it actually does? It just doesn't make sense to me. It would make more sense if we had a better uh, ground clearance in this case. But now just make this white, Move the, remove this black piece, make it white, keep the black piece up top though, because I do like that we have some volume uh, cutting, uh, cutting away some graphic volume from the top part to make it feel lighter up top and uh, the mass is moved down further low to make it sit nicely graphically. These wheels, I, I'm not I'm not sure if these wheels will work on any other car than a Kia these days. They're very geometrical as you can see, but they are in line with the rest of the graphics going on uh, along the rest of the car. It feels like it's almost a square wheel just looking at the <laughs> design of the spoke. We have different wheels for the normal non uh, GT line down here, but the rear end is probably my favorite view of this because this feels sort of Volvo-ish to me. We have, a, you can see this chamfer here, barely, but we do have a chamfer going here. 
around the key graphics, which are the taillights. We have not a full light bar, but some key graphic black pieces connecting the two uh, uh, light, uh, taillights. And again, talking about these uh, geometrical shapes at the end point of the thin LEDs coming back here. Nice roof spoiler. We do have, look at this. They actually decided to put a small little curvature here, something that we rarely see on Kia EV lines uh, these days. So we have a small curvature here, a, a bit of a curvature here, radius in the taillights, but then they go back to the very sharp angles all over. And then a radius here again, sharp angle, small little radius, and a mix of a bunch of uh, very simple geometric features when it comes to the design of the new EV. Uh, like pretty much every single EV that comes out from Kia these days. The rear bumper looks very complex compared to the compared to everything else that goes on here. We have these slots, for example, graphic features, and this line cutting in here, creating another chamfer or, or surface here that is disconnected from the, the surfacing of the rest of the, the rear diffuser or bumper, or whatever you want to call this. And then you have this reflector light just cutting right through this graphic and into the black piece in the lower section. Very interesting design from Kia here. Uh, playing around, I think they are having fun designing these cars. The only problem I have with this type of car, uh, this type of uh, design language, where it's very robotic and very uh, industrial designy, product designy, is that I can't imagine how you would, uh, you know, analog sketch this up because all these lines, they don't feel like they have the flow of a hand sketch if that makes sense. There's, there are too many sharp angles. It just doesn't feel natural to sketch this up, which feels, which makes me think that this is probably designed uh, from the start in a computer, in a 3D software, and not designed by hand. But I could be wrong. I could be completely wrong when it comes to that. Maybe designers these days just uh, have more of a robotic sketching style. Look at the door handle up here as well, cleaning up the, the passenger door in the back, looking nice. Now looking at the interior here, let's see if we can find the, uh, this is the five inch screen right here in the middle. So this is the dedicated climate control screen in between the two 12.3 inch uh, screens that we have for the gauge cluster right here. And then also the infotainment screen on this side. I do like the steering wheel here. These are the physical buttons that we talked about. So you can use either of these physical buttons to change some settings in the infotainment screen. Or if you want to, you can use the touch screen as well. Looks to be, I'm not sure what these buttons are for, but they definitely look to be physical buttons. And we have a physical hazard button here. A couple of USB port, wireless charging at the very bottom. And the table that slides back and forth is, I do believe it's this section here. And it still feels for some reason, even though we do have two 12.3 inch uh, screens here, it still feels welcoming and pretty warm. Which is weird because usually when we have EV interiors, you'll feel that you have this soulless vibe to it. It doesn't feel welcoming. It doesn't feel warm and uh, cozy in the interior. But this feels pretty good to me. We do have this metal looking bar right here. Also creating more of this robotic look coming in from the exterior into the interior. So overall, if this goes on sale for 30 grand, uh, with a range of 350 miles. So I do maybe not 30 grand for the 300 long range version. It's probably going to be a little bit more closer to 40. But I think this would still be a great little starter EV. It also has a great charging rate, uh, 10 to 80% in 30 minutes, which is not bad at all. Pretty much a standard these days. And the design, it looks like an upscale design. And again, Kia is just nailed. They're just hammering in what they want their entire lineup to look at. And these days, if you look at it, if you see a key outside, it's very easy to identify it as a Kia because of the key graphic features that we have on the car. So overall, it's a great little car and great job by the design team of Kia.